see Miss Tucker tonight. I'm glad you're here. We're enjoying the love feast, expressing our care and concern for each other. This is the Amazing Grace Bible Class, brought to you each week at this time by the Madison Church of Christ. Good morning, and welcome to the Amazing Grace Bible Class. We've been coming into your home with this program for about 12 years. It's been a delight to be in your home. For almost all of these programs, your host has been Dr. Ira North, the minister of the Madison Church of Christ. By this time, you've learned of his death and the funeral this past week. Many of you were kind enough to call and speak to the family or send flowers or cards. And on behalf of the entire North family, we'd like to thank you for that honor. We'd like to remind you that this was a man who loved people and who loved the gospel of Christ. And for that reason, we've prepared a very special program this morning that we think you're going to enjoy. Why not call a friend right now and spend the next few moments together watching this tribute to Dr. Ira North, the host of the Amazing Grace Bible Class, Mr. Enthusiasm, and a friend to thousands. Let's watch this special program today. I welcome you today to the Amazing Grace Bible class. I'm Jim Mankin, the associate teacher of the class, and Nick Boone is our song director. We have a very special program for you today, and I think you'll be interested in it. Our first song is We're Marching to Zion. Today, Jerry Sherrill and George Goldtrap are with me for a special program highlighting some events and people in the life of Brother Ira North. We believe these examples of how Brother North loved and worked with people will be an inspiration to you and will challenge you to examine your own life and your relationship to the Savior. Quite often at the end of a sermon or a public worship, we sing a special song which we call an invitation song to encourage people to obey the gospel. You may have begun your Christian life this very way, by walking down an aisle, confessing your faith in Christ, and being buried with Him in baptism for the remission of sins. Ira North did that same thing many years ago at the age of 10. That day the congregation sang a song that has become a favorite with many of you. Join the great Madison congregation as Nick Boone leads softly and tenderly.
Ira loved to recall his feeling of joy as he came up out of the water, a babe in Christ, born again, full of zeal, determined to preach the gospel. His oldest son, Steve, recalls an instant when young Ira's determination to preach almost got him into trouble. He was preaching in the barber shop, and he was preaching a sermon on smoking. And he was six, seven years old now. And he was saying everybody that smokes is going to go right to the bad place and all of that. And somebody said, uh, well, Ira, your daddy smokes. And he says, everybody's going to go, everybody that smokes is going to go to the bad place except my daddy. <laughs> Ira North never forgot his rural beginning, how he and his father worked in the soil in Lawrence County, Tennessee. Ira's mother and father both believed in the value of education, especially in a Christian environment. He began at David Lipscomb in Nashville and went on to receive the B.A. degree from Abilene Christian College in 1943 and received his master's from the University of Illinois. Then he completed the Ph.D. requirement at LSU in 1953. Ira North returned to David Lipscomb as a professor of speech and Bible. He enjoyed boasting that the younger preachers on the Madison Church of Christ today were his students during those Lipscomb days. I surrounded myself with the most dedicated, talented, intelligent people I could find. I did it because I wanted to get the job done. A serendipity of that is, it makes you look good. I apologize to them all the time about taking credit for their work. R.B. Owen is one of Brother Norris' former students. I first knew him when I started the David Lipscomb College after I was discharged in the Navy in 1946. And uh, he was one of the best professors I've ever had. He, he not only was a good instructor, but he made the classes entertaining. Dr. Bill Banowski was greatly influenced by the teaching of Ira North. He uh, is one of the greatest influences in my life. I went to David Lipscomb College when I was 18 years old, 1954. Ira was in his 30s, and he was the most uh, uh, exciting, the most charismatic, that's the perfect word for Ira, most charismatic person on the faculty. And to a young man like me from Texas, I was full of energy, and Nashville was a little bit slow for me, but not Ira North. Uh, he was inspirational, and then he was very personal. Uh, he took an interest in me as a human being, and I would have to say, apart from my own family, there's been no greater personal influence in my life. The methods, like the man, were unorthodox. Well, Ira was a very uh, unorthodox teacher. Uh, sometimes he would show up at class a little late, and sometimes he might not show up at all. But uh, when he did show up, he was better than, than most of the teachers we had. And then he loved little Dolly. That's his only daughter. He had some big old ugly sons who are grown now, but little Dolly, he would bring her, he would dress her in a pretty little starch dress and bring her and put her up on a chair and spend the whole hour lecturing on the magnificence of Dolly. But, uh, you know, teaching really is the communication of one personality to another. And there was that love of students, that love of life, that enthusiasm to grow, which, uh, which uh, reached us as young men and women. Faculty friendships included Dr. Batsel Barrett Baxter, who was host of the nationally syndicated Herald of Truth telecast, and Willard Collins, who is now president of David Lipscomb. Even when it was raining, he would come across the campus and he'd be singing, he'd have his umbrella and be singing, oh, what a beautiful morning, what a beautiful day. I got a wonderful feeling, everything's going my way. And he'd walk in the building, go down the hall, slam the classroom door and say, at ease, men. He took a lot of teasing, but he had a lot of fun during his professor days riding his big motorcycle. He told with great enthusiasm the story of how he persuaded Mrs. North to ride with him. 32 years ago, Ira North began his work as minister of the church in Madison, Tennessee. He was to become a unique association. The congregation had begun in 1934 and in 1936 moved into this filled stone building. By 1947, a basement building was added, and they were meeting here when Brother North began his service on October the 1st, 1953. Because of his flamboyant style and red suits, his friends soon dubbed him Fiery Irie. He did things that nobody could get by with, but he did them and people loved it. Very few preachers 
who preached for Madison or a congregation like that could drive a Cadillac. But when the daddy offered to give him one, he went to the congregation first and said, now, if you'll be ashamed of me driving this big car, let me know now. He had a little showmanship about him, but that showmanship helped him as a preacher in many ways. The red suits. The red suits. Who could wear a red suit in our I decided a long time ago to be me. One reason is I had a papa and a mama. We were raised poor. I didn't know it. But my mama loved my papa and my papa loved my mama. And when mama's wrapped up in papa and papa's wrapped up in mama, you can almost forget about the children. I knew I was worth something. I don't ever remember feeling insecure. How could I feel insecure when my father adored my mother? and vice versa. The Madison Church became the largest congregation in the world of an undenominational New Testament church, and in 1968 received the Guidepost Magazine Church of the Year Award. During this period of dynamic growth, Ira North stressed love and service to our fellow man, especially the very young and the very old. I love little children. I've made the practice for 43 years. Every child that comes out of my door, I kiss them on the head. And some of them will stand in line for just a long time. Now I'm kissing on the head uh, the children of the children. And one little girl said to me, they said, Brother North, I felt important when I was little because every Sunday you made it to do over me and said, I want my little girl to grow up like that. And if it's all right with you, I want her to come out your door every Sunday. <laughs> Ira North's preaching was punctuated with his love of life. A high point of vacation Bible school was his famous cartoon character parade. The kids loved it, and so did Ira. You know, children know when you love them. They know when your intentions are pure. They know when you think they're important. And they know what you believe in. And I want to get them on that spiral of success early. And above all, I want them to believe in the dignity of man. And I want them to believe in their self-worth. They are important. There are people's lives who have been touched, I'm sure, in every one of the 50 states by some man who was being influenced by Ira North's ideas. You know, we have televised the Amazing Grace Bible class in the great Civic Auditorium in Lake Charles, Louisiana. We have televised in Dallas, in Houston, in Detroit, in Indianapolis, and Oklahoma City, and many places. But I've never had the privilege of presenting a Bible that thrills me as much as this one. We are presenting it to a lovely Christian lady who will be 100 years old, her birthday, January 21st, 1882. She has been a member of the Church of Our Lord since 1900, a member here of this congregation. And she is something real, real special. We are just so thrilled to present to Mrs. Ludy Peeler, faithful, loyal and true in her attendance, will be 100 years old, January the 21st, and been a member of the Church of Our Lord, obeyed the gospel, baptized into Christ 81 years ago. God bless you, my dear, Thank and we you. hope Thank you enjoy that 100th birthday. God bless you, and take your time now as you leave, and. Uh, someone will assist you. If you want to grow, get busy for the poor, the lowly, the humble, the homeless, the retarded, the downtrodden. There's a mystery to it. I don't understand it, but I believe it. And grow we did. 1960 marked the beginning of the Madison Children's Home. We added Meal on Wheels, Saturday Samaritans, summer camp, special classes for special children, and most recently, care was extended from the youngest to the oldest with the construction of the Ira and Avon North Christian Retirement Center. Brother North's enthusiasm was contagious, and he loved to say that Madison was marching for the master. He was the spark plug. 
his favorite means of motivation was to pin a medal on anyone who did anything good. Dr. Norris' interest in television began when the industry was still in its infancy. He conducted a children's program, a Bible quiz program, and for 11 years hosted the Amazing Grace Bible class. On his very first Amazing Grace telecast, Brother Norris said, And we're dreaming tonight. And I want you to dream with me. We got three dreams for this class. Number one, we want to syndicate this class right here from Nashville, Tennessee. And we want it to go around this nation. From the very beginning of Amazing Grace, one of the most popular features of this class has been the reading of the 23rd Psalm and the prayer. You would be amazed at the letters we get from people for whom the 23rd Psalm has some special meaning. Perhaps it's very important to you. Listen now as we hear Brother North read the 23rd Psalm with an audience in Abilene, Texas on July 26, 1979. Following the reading, Brother North will lead our prayer. Would you read aloud with me? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup of oil. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let us bow and let us pray. O Lord God of heaven, we thank you for this wonderful land in which we live, for its freedom. Our Father, we thank you for the privilege of prayer, and we pray for each name on our prayer list today. For everyone that said, remember me when you pray, please suit the blessing they need most. Lord God of heaven, we ask that you bless this class today to our good and to your glory. Keep us close together and close to thee, and save us eternally. For we pray in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Viewers could hardly believe that he didn't beg for money, promise miracle cures, or talk politics. I have kept politics absolutely out of the pulpit. One reason our television program is accepted nationally, we do not discuss political issues. Ira didn't talk politics, but politicians talked to Ira. Governor Lamar Alexander of Tennessee recently presented Dr. North with another honor, one of many proudly displayed in his office. Ira North has affected everyone that he's come into contact with because he just radiates good feeling about his fellow man. And he has, he has changed people's lives in many ways. Uh, he, he has not only been involved in the community where he lives, but every person that he has talked with and been with has really uh, had their lives changed in some way because he's, he's just a very special person. And everyone who has had the privilege of knowing him realizes that. Our North loved people. He loved life. He had the personality to succeed in business or the professional world. Instead, he chose the cross of Christ. Sometimes I wish I didn't have such high profile. But you see, my training is public address, the University of Illinois and LSU. And I was taught, and I have taught all my years of teaching, above all, you must be sincere. You must be yourself. If I were not outgoing, affectionate, pat you on the back, hugging you when I see you, it wouldn't be me. One of the most unusual things, I believe, is that we have really worked as a team with Brother North at Madison. Jerry, I want you to tell us some of the special things that Brother North has meant to you in your life. Well, Brother North baptized me 22 years ago, and he performed my wedding ceremony 21 years ago, and I've been able to work with him for the last 13 years. He's made a great impression on my life. I know you've been very close. In fact, 
I'd say he's almost been like a father figure to you. That's true. And George, you and I were in school together when he was teaching, but what memory do you have of Brother North? Well, of course, the first one, start with those days in school. He was for everything. He supported the band, he supported the drama groups, the athletic teams, the, and especially the preacher boys. And then, of course, uh, the years that I've been able to work with him on the television program have been a real delight because he liked to do it in a professional way. And yet the sincerity uh, and the enthusiasm in the program was always present. It's, uh, it's been a delight with some, to, to work with somebody who enjoyed what they were doing. He's really been a remarkable man. When I was a freshman in college at David Lipscomb, he was our class sponsor. And he'd go with us on outings. But you know, he always loved people so very much. And I can't help but remember some of his sermons that he would preach, such as, If I Were a Woman. He just put everything he had into it. And you enjoyed it as much as he did, but he made a lasting impression because you really believed that he believed what he was saying. He was genuine and real and true blue. Now, my goal in life is just to be the best preacher I can be and do all the good I can and no harm. I know you will say with me how thankful we are that Ira North passed our way. His life and his death have been a victory in Jesus. You know, though, we all have so many wonderful memories of Brother North, and perhaps we'll never see another like him. I couldn't help but remember that in his life he truly lived the blessed man as described in the first psalm. And I think this is a wonderful lesson that all of us could take from his life and make it a part of mine. The first psalm says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth its fruit in its season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked shall perish. You know, if you're happy, if you're blessed in the sense that the psalmist was talking about, there are certain negative things that you shun. He says that we won't walk or stand or sit with anyone that's evil and ungodly. In the life of Ira North, he achieved this in a wonderful way because, you know, he hated everything that was sordid or ugly or evil. Instead, he loved what was clean and beautiful. He wanted to be a clean man mentally and physically and spiritually. And so the psalmist says, you shun those things. But in a positive way, he says that the delight of our heart is in the law of the Lord. We love God's book, the Bible. We love to sing and treasure the things that come from God. And we meditate day and night on the things that are righteous. One Wednesday night, not too long ago, in a devotional service, we asked all of our ministers to read some scripture and we sang appropriate songs. And the scripture that Brother North was assigned to read was 2 Timothy 2.15. It just so happened that when he got up, the Bible that he was given to use, that particular scripture was cut out. But he said, I know that scripture. I've known it from my youth. But study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, handling aright the word of truth. He loved the Bible with all of his heart. And so the psalmist says, when you're righteous, when you do what's right, you're like a tree planted by a river of water, you're fruitful, you're green, you have so much. 
We believe in the life of the child of God that this is an accurate description. The wicked are not so. They perish. They're on the broad way that leads to destruction. But the righteous, ah, how wonderful it is. We have a home with God. We have a place that we can spend in eternity. And we know that we can go to heaven where there's no weeping or pain or crying or sickness or dying. For those of us who live with God, this is our final victory.